<laughs> that was pretty good. So you know what this sword reminds me of? Looking at it? It's not glowy and crystal, but this looks like the original Fume Ultra Great Sword. This is the original Fugs, right here. <laughs> So here, but not when I play her. You know, three plays and matches really well. Yeah, Cammy. Cammy is an interesting character. Um, pretty much all of her moves are safe. So as long as you know uh, what you're doing, um, which doesn't take a whole lot, you just have to put a little, a little bit of intention into it. You can kind of just non-stop pressure with cami you just got to make sure uh don't spiral arrow you got to really hit confirm your spiral arrow because that is your most unsafe move um but in general cami uh i say cami's easy to play but that's mainly because she only has like three different combos and um almost everything she does is safe it's kind of ridiculous and you don't want to rely on v skill too much with cami that's the other thing v skill can get you into trouble Third try right now. Big mistake I see is people not being aggressive enough. Yeah, exactly. You gotta you gotta change the way you play with Cami because she's so plus on everything. You have to apply that non-stop pressure to your opponents. Uh, Cami was my second main character. So when I started playing Street Fighter Five, I played Guile, and then eventually I switched to Cami. And I played Cami for the longest time before picking up Sakura. Played her neutral for so long, ended up biting me hard. Yeah. Her neutral is actually pretty good, though. She's got a solid neutral game. You just gotta be a little tricky with it. Um, let's see. Let's head back to the inner ward now that we can continue there. So, she... Um, her, her standing medium kick is a great poke, but she also has crouch medium kick, which you can buffer into spiral arrow or uh, cannon spike. So one of the great things to do is um, you you put yourself just out of range of your crouch medium kick where it's going to whiff, right? Then you buffer crouch medium kick into spiral arrow. That way, if they hit a button or step forward, your crouch medium kick hits and your spiral arrow buffer goes through. And you get that great oaky off of her spiral arrow. All right, so we should be able to go through here now. So that was guy, that guy that called all the archers when we fought the Tower Knight here. There were all the archers on the wall. When we first came in, the Tower Knight was there, and then that guy was standing up there and signal all the archers on us. About diamonds started getting ate up a lot. Yeah, I got, uh, I got close to silver a few times with Cammy, but... There were a few situations I was just struggling with. Um, honestly, what it, what my problem with Cami was I was still playing her in a way that allowed me to bypass the neutral game, just like I was doing with Guile. Um, Guile, I was just playing pure zone. I had no idea how to pressure, no idea how to close, no idea how to play neutral, and that's why I chose to stop playing Guile. And then with Cami, I got a lot better, but I still was relying on um, dive kick and spiral arrow and V skill, which is even worse, to uh, close distance and keep me from having to play neutral. And that's why I stopped playing Cami eventually and started Sakura, 
was because Sakura had no way to simply just bypass the neutral game like all the other characters did. You had to play neutral, and in order to close distance, you had to do stuff like time your dashes and your walk-ups and play neutral and just get that... You, you had to learn to uh, play those aspects of the game correctly. And that's what I was looking for, is a character that would force me to learn that. Since then, I've gone back and played Kyle... Uh, Kyle... Cammy and Guile more, <laughs> but after playing Sakura and and learning more of Guile, I feel like Cammy. Whenever I go back and play Cammy, I like her, but she's just she feels boring to play because you don't really have to think. You just run at the opponent, attacking and doing the same couple combos over and over again until they're dead. You know. Another Dragling Shield. Ooh! Oh! Oh! Oh my goodness! That was pretty good. Alright. Um, Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. Oh, there we go. There's a the path. I was like, I don't see anywhere else to go. Oh, what is that? Oh, hi. What did I get hit by? Why is my health so low? Uh oh, oh, watch it. There we go. Uh oh, that was close. Nope. Play Kareen, Cammy, and Colleen. Skipping neutral? Nah. <laughs> yeah, I was relying too much on um, V-Skill and other things to try and get me around having to play neutral. Ooh, wow, alright. They kicked my ass. Real neutral is my favorite part of in FGC. It's, um... I don't know. I have I have a mixed reaction to the neutral game, right? So for me, um, neutral is the most core element of a fighting game, right? It's the one thing you can't skimp on. You got to know how to play the neutral. That said, and 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 if you can play it like like. My main goal is to be able to play neutral well, because playing neutral well is the best thing you can do to uh, win matches and whatnot. But what I really enjoy doing when I'm playing fighting games is getting the, the crazy combos off on your opponent and doing just ridiculous damage. So I tend to spend more time focusing on crazy combo streams that I can do and then I spend on um, actually playing neutral or focusing on neutral. And it's it's something I've gotten better about a better about, especially after uh, switching to Sakura. But I just like the big flashy combos. I believe better neutral is the better player. Absolutely, no comebacks, no corner, no CA, no triggers. Yeah, like. Whoever whoever plays neutral better is gonna win the match. Generally speaking, um, I've definitely won plenty of matches where I lost neutral all day long, and they took away three quarters of my health, and I got one I got one good hit in, and confirmed that into a combo that got me corner carry, and then my corner mix up game was enough that I could just full to dead them right there. Like I've done some ridiculous comebacks like that. Um, 
because I practice all those combos and the pressure and the mix-ups and stuff. But I'd rather be good at just the neutral. And uh, that's something that I struggle with. And I, I struggle with how to... Whoa, this is a new enemy. New enemy. Hold on, hold on, hold up. I struggle with how to practice that so that I can get better as well. Play Tekken, sounds up your alley. Combos are king. I hate Tekken. <laughs> Stealth throwing dagger. That... What is that? That looks so absurd. What is that? Basically, somebody took their Swiss army knife, pulled out every single blade and corkscrew and whatnot on it, and then threw it at somebody. That's what that is. <laughs> so, I I played Tekken um, back when it very first came out. I remember uh, playing the first Tekken game, and I was not impressed. I was not impressed for all of the reasons that all of my friends loved Tekken, which was the, the preset combos. Um, up until then, I'd mostly been playing Street Fighter, King of Fighters, Samurai Showdown, and games like that, where you had to link combos based on frame data and, and, and whatnot. And so, um, learning what you could and couldn't do, what could and couldn't combo, and... Um, what you could cancel into and and what worked best and how to optimize like that was that was what separated the good players from everybody else in fighting games for me so playing tekken and realizing all i had to do was remember this 10 button sequence and i could do you know this ridiculous combo every time that just i don't know that was kind of a turnoff for me i didn't i didn't really care for it uh, and apart from that in general tekken for the first couple games when it came out was very slow and clunky compared to Street Fighter and some of the other games that were out at the time. Um, I'm now I'm not saying Tekken is a bad game. I'm just saying this is why I didn't I didn't really enjoy Tekken. Um, I have played Tekken Seven a little bit, but it just it just really isn't uh, it just really isn't my kind of game. I don't know. I, I it's hard to put my finger on exactly what it is about Tekken because. While, while I say all of this about Tekken, I love Soul Calibur. <laughs> and Soul Blade was one of my, the original, was one of my favorite fighting games back in the day. So, I mean, it kind of seems... Oh, what is that? More stealth throwing daggers. It kind of seems hypocritical, like, and, and contradictory, you know? Because Soul Blade and Tekken had so much in common in terms of how they were intended to play, but... Once on 1998, and you still bring that up? <laughs> you feared that one blade Swiss, though? It is slow. I like the chess. Uh, but I played DOA a lot. Needed the speed, which SF has. Yeah, and the new Tekken has that. I, I mean, I played Tekken 7. It definitely has the more, more of the fluidity and the speed that, you know, the other games have. It's, I mean... I don't know. It's it's the kind of the the kind of game that um, I don't know. Just the way it plays, it just doesn't appeal to me personally. And and, and mainly mainly I guess I don't know. It's if it's because it's a three D fighter or not. Like I said, I still like Soul Calibur. So, but in general, I'm not a fan of three D fighters. I prefer two D fighters. So, great balls of fire. Taking with slow pokes to get hit and combo. Oh, excuse me. Get the combo in. Loved that and ranked so high. Great balls of fire. Goose! Goose! Oh, man. I still haven't seen the new Top Gun. Is that even out yet? I'm not sure if that one came I thought it came out, but I haven't seen it if it has. All the movie theaters near me are closed, so... Ow! Damn! Alright, you guys need to fucking stop it. Seriously. 
it's not out yet, but it's done, apparently? Okay. I want to see Monster Hunter, but all the theaters around me are closed, and um, it's not streaming anywhere like all the other new release movies are. Pass on that one. Yeah, I mean, it looked decent. It, it honestly, I'm, I, it was one of those things that came as a huge surprise to um, the American audiences because it had been in production for years in Japan, and it wasn't until earlier this year, like I want to say March or April of this year, somebody took a video with their cell phone of the trailer for Monster Hunter in Japan at a movie theater and leaked it on Facebook, and that's when everybody else learned about Monster Hunter the movie. That was the first trailer that came out in the United States for Monster Hunter, was this cell phone video of a dude in, that a dude in Japan took, because they weren't planning on releasing it here, apparently. Because Monster Hunter is just not as popular in America as it is uh, in Japan. So, uh, it was surprising that it was coming out, and also that they had a big name actress like Mila Jovovic in the movie, and they weren't advertising it. <laughs> we'll see. I just like Monster Hunter. I don't expect too much from the movie. I do that more than I should, Law Torrent. Yeah. Wasn't that bad of a movie? Okay, that's good. I just love Monster Hunter and I wanna see uh I wanna see the movie. Just because it's Monster Hunter. Good, bad, whatever, I don't care. It's Monster Hunter, I wanna see it. Yo, fuck off! Wonder if the new Monster Hunter on Switch will make it popular? I doubt it. Carries the same weight... ...as Mesothea- what? Need to get a Switch? The one console I've ignored? Yeah, I got one, uh, like two years ago. For my kids. I really don't use it very much. Um, I have a couple games for it, but in general I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge uh, fan of the Switch. The new Monster Hunter game for Switch, I'm also, uh, I've been looking at. I, might, I, I will probably get it just because it's Monster Hunter. But there's a lot of stuff that they do in that game that is very not Monster Hunter and I'm not too excited for and just doesn't look very good. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, honestly, the new the Monster Hunter game coming to the Switch isn't really going to do much for the franchise. Um, Monster Hunter World did everything for the franchise. And the reason they're making the new one for the Switch is because they don't have Monster Hunter World on the Switch and they can't put it on the Switch. So they're making a new game just for the Switch. Uh, so I don't expect too much out of that game. Um... Monster Hunter World came out and quickly became, it's been out for what, four years now I think? Something like that? Three, four years? And uh, within like the first year I believe, it became Capcom's best selling video game of all time. That's how big Monster Hunter World was. So I really don't think the new one for the Switch is going to do a whole lot more than World did for the franchise. Especially since it's basically being made... I mean, they wouldn't say this, but the way I see it is it's being made as a consolation for Switch owners who can't get Monster Hunter World. Big name, but not a good thing to have. I like new tech, so I ignored it. Want 4K 60 FPS? Yeah, and that's... The, the big thing for me with the Switch was... Um, I got it for my kids. I mean, my kids really wanted a Switch with all they wanted for Christmas last year. Why will you not just fucking stop? And that stairway is so damn cramped, it's hard to see. Uh, my kids really wanted one for Christmas last year, so they got a Switch for Christmas last year. Um, my son loves Splatoon 2. Actually, for Christmas this year, all I wanted was uh, the Octo Expansion and a Switch Online membership. Um, and they love Animal Crossing and stuff like that. I mean, I'm, eh, meh. I don't really care. We play Smash Bros, we play Mario Kart, and 
and a couple other things every now and then, but for the most part, the Switch is for them and not for me. It was also, it's also good as a portable, as like a handheld replacement, so um, I ended up getting a lot of stuff on the Switch that I had on my 3DS, just because I could put more on the Switch and do more with the Switch than the 3DS, but... Man, I'm getting my ass kicked here. No healing. Oh wow, my item burden is maxed out, apparently. I feel like most Switch players have other consoles or PC. When I was traveling it'd be good, but now I'm not. I want VR for PS5, that's coming. I want VR for PC. Basically, the first thing, if I got a VR headset, the very first thing I would do is boot up Elite Dangerous and start flying through space again in VR. Or I would boot up uh, Ace Combat and start playing that in VR. Basically, I've wanted, ever since I was a little kid, and I got, like, Terminal Velocity on DOS and Descent and whatnot, I've loved air combat games, and I've wanted nothing more than to play an air combat game with a joystick and throttle setup and a VR headset, and now that's possible. <laughs> I just gotta get the money to do it. <laughs> There we go. I just need to get somewhere I can actually see before I fight that guy. I remember playing VR in the 90s. Oh, man. Those gigantic headsets they had back then. Oh. And all the gimmicky stuff, too. Like, um... I remember a friend had one of these, and I got to mess around on it. Ooh, what's in here? Uh, but it was a... Oh god, get up the ladder. Get out of the firing range. Uh, it was a vest, right? Like a, a combat tactical vest. And it had all of these little um, compression cylinders in it, right? And it hooked up to an air compressor and then plugged into the computer with a USB cable. And basically what it did is if you're playing a shooting game and you got shot in the chest, right? The little compressors in the chest would expand in order to give you the impact of something hitting you in the chest. So if you got shot in the back, you'd feel the thing go off in your back and you could tell where you were getting hit from. It was the weirdest thing. It made a ton of noise with the air compressor. It totally wasn't worth it for like, I wanna say like $300. Um, but it was fun and goofy to play around with. We were playing uh, Unreal Tournament 2004 and it was ridiculous because when you got hit with the rocket launcher and your character exploded, it literally just randomly set off everything over the entirety of the vest, and it was the most bizarre sensation. <laughs> the weird shit they would come up with. You stood in a little ring to keep you from walking? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I got it before he fell. I also remember um, before they started working on the Oculus Rift and the Vive, there was a um, a headset that came out that uh, I remember this came out right around the same time as Fallout 3, right? So it was this gigantic like space helmet VR headset and it had VR screens built into it and motion tracking and all this kind of stuff, but it also had fans all over the helmet with heating and cooling units in them so that you could get blasts of hot or cold air depending on what was going on around you and it also came with this ridiculous chemical pack and the chemical pack would actually mix different chemicals together and spray them into the helmet so that you could get the sense of the area around you, you could smell the areas you were in. And I just remember looking at this $2,000 headset and I'm like, I do not want to spend $2,000 so I can smell the rotting flesh of the wasteland in Fallout 3. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's all I could think of is why would I spend $2,000 so that I could learn what a, a freaking super mutant smells like? No, thank you. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> 
Virtual Boy? Oh yeah, Virtual Boy was... I remember how much... I remember when Virtual Boy came out and I got to try it for the first time and I wanted one. I was sold. It was the dumbest thing ever, but man, I was like eight years old and I was like, dude, yes, this. I want it. Ah, I fucking died again. I installed... Sat at people's houses and... One had that and let me try it. But that made the sewer level fun, <laughs> right? Oh. How are the new PS5 controllers? Are they using the tech so far? Uh, yeah. So, the uh, the haptic feedback is actually um much more significant than I was expecting it to be. Uh, they have um. A little, uh, one of the, the, the free little game that comes with the PS5 is called Astro's Playroom. And they have some demo stuff in there for the controller and the adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback. And it's crazy. Like, one of the things they show off with the controller is, um, is it down the sides? It's over the whole controller. It really is. One of the things that they show off in, uh, Astro's Playroom in the, the little demo, right? On the screen, the um the touchpad slot here and let me switch cameras here real quick so you can actually see what I'm doing. on the screen the touchpad slot opens up and they fill it with all these little figures okay and then they have you move the controller around right and it's crazy because basically what it's replicating is all of this stuff moving back and forth inside the controller and bouncing around and i swear as you move this thing around you can feel everything shift to one side of the controller and then rolling down to the other side as you're moving the controller back and forth you can feel everything moving inside like it's really there it's 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 hard to explain but it really is way more significant than you would think when you when you actually feel it and start playing it like you can feel the different textures of things as your character walks and and um hits things and whatnot more than you you think you would uh the adaptive triggers i haven't had anything um use those too much uh the most I've gotten using the adaptive triggers is in Madden. When you go to sprint, it just makes the trigger harder to press. But, I mean, the only two games that I have for the PS5 specifically are Demon Souls and Madden. And neither of them really use the adaptive triggers. So, um, I can't talk about them too much. But, yeah, the, ha the, the haptic feedback is... When I first saw the videos for the new controller, I'm like, oh, great, another gimmick from PlayStation. But... It's actually pretty cool. Do they feel more solid? Yes, they do. Um... Let me make sure I'm safe here. So, I actually have my PS4 controller here. If we put the PS4 controller up next to the PS5, you can see that the PS5 is actually slightly bigger. But more so, if you look at it from the side, you can see that the uh, the area where you rest your fingers behind the, the triggers there is actually much thicker. Um, this controller, it really just fills out my hands much more um, fully than the PS5 or the PS4 one does. Actually, when I go back to playing the PS4, what I notice is how much is missing right here. And I literally just, it feels empty there. It just feels like there's there's material missing there that it should be fuller. I love the PS4 controller. I love the PS3. Like the PlayStation controller has always been my favorite. And every time they change it, I'm skeptical. But so far, every time they have, I have liked it more than the previous version. So... I loved the PS4 controller, the PS5 controller I like even more. And it's interesting because it's got this weird uh, seam here on the front where the black material is. And I thought that that would annoy my hands and get in the way. But what I found is that when I grab the controller, that black area, whoops, wrong side. It is like designed to perfectly fit in the gap between my palm and my fingers. Like 
this controller is so beautifully designed. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm I'm surprised how much I love this controller. It's it's it really is way more significant than it would seem. All the crap they did talking it up just made it seem like hype, but man, it's 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 nice. Like an Xbox controller? I uh, I'm ex except it's not an Xbox controller, right? Uh, I don't think I have my Xbox controller in here. I hate the triggers and the, the 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 trigger buttons on the Xbox controller. The bumper, the way it clicks, and it's not it doesn't even feel like a real button. It feels like part of the controller that you can press. Um, but like not a button. And then I don't like their triggers as much as the PlayStation controllers, but So the PS5 is good? Yeah, I'm a fan of the PS5 so far. Always loved Xbox controller more than PlayStation 1. That's fair. I've always been the opposite. But, like the Segway graphics. <laughs> oh man, I really need to go back and... Uh... I really need to go back and empty my inventory. Holy crap. I like the D-pad location on PlayStation more and feel PlayStation is better for fighting games. Even if I can't take abuse of me throwing it. <laughs> I mean, most controllers aren't going to take the abuse of being thrown, but... I've always liked the PlayStation controller. Um... Quite frankly, one of the worst controllers of all time for me is the freaking original, original Xbox controller. Man, that thing was just a nightmare. It basically looked like somebody sh loaded a shotgun shell with plastic buttons and fired it at a piece of plastic and said, Hey, look, this is what our controller is going to be. Oh my god, are you kidding? Throw them into a pillow. I mean, I guess that makes it a little better. <laughs> But I mean, that load time, actually, before we go any further, let's head back. The load time, I'm getting so spoiled with the load times. I was playing this on uh, PlayStation 5, and I mean, look at this. I'm fast traveling to the Nexus, okay? Load screen. This is the load screen. We're done. And then switching to PS, uh, or to uh, Dark Souls 3 on the PC and having to actually wait for stuff to load, I'm like, what is this bullshit? <laughs> Why did the original Xbox controller have unlabeled buttons? They weren't labeled, they were colored. So you had A, B, X, Y, and then black and white. <laughs> yeah, the original Xbox controller, man, that one was... Oof. Alright, what do we got in here? Oh, these probably taken up quite a bit. Oh, yeah, look at that. 12 pounds in flowers. <laughs> uh, what do these do? Sprinkle over the user grants additional fire resistance temporarily. Okay. We'll hold on to those. We don't need the stone of ephemeral eyes. Augite of guidance. I don't think we need those. We don't need the throwing knives. Uh, let's put the demon, dragon demon soul here. Alright, there we go. 45 out of 100. We're good. You have a heart of what they really needed to add to dark to demon souls that they did not add was the option to sell shit. Oh my god. Playing a casual match earlier with Playwired Dojo. Threw it a couple times. Match me with a Warlord. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I prefer playing fighting games on stick. But one of the things I love about the PlayStation controller is that the joysticks are even with... And, and then the you have the D-pad and the buttons up here that are even. I don't like the uh, like offset joysticks like the Switch and the... Um, 
the Xbox have where you have your thumbstick here and here and then your buttons here and here. I don't like that. I like I like having it even like the PlayStation controller has. Get out of here with that bullshit. Oh, you didn't die. Why didn't you die? Oh, what? <clears throat> I didn't get the riposte. And then he didn't die, and then I did. <laughs> Soon build a new PC. Get my regular accounts back. Yeah. Well, you get a $600 stimulus check in a couple months, you can use that to uh, buy one or two pieces of a PC. Actually, my PC was dying and I've been trying to figure out how I was going to build a new one. And I I've been fairly lucky through, um, through all the nonsense this year. Um, I work in IT, so my job has become more necessary with everything going on, but I've also gotten to work from home, so I've saved a lot of money on travel and gas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, I actually took my stimulus check and rebuilt my PC because I needed it to work from home, and um, my old one was dying. It needed a new power supply and CPU, which meant new motherboard, and I basically I just decided to do a full rebuild, uh, essentially, so... Gotcha. Seeing the difference between PS5 and PS4 Street Fighter load times. 3090. Oh, it'd be nice. Should have been 2K. Bought scotch and cigars with mine. There you go. <laughs> Alright, alright. So this is... Oh, this is where that guy is. That's the staircase I was just thinking of. Oh, god! Oh, god! You guys aren't supposed to be here yet! Alright, hold up, hold up. Alright, so there should be one here. Ow! Wow, he really got me in the back like that? Come on down. Come on. Really? You're just gonna stand right in front of me and try and heal? Get out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> Ooh, claws! Let's check those out. Can I two-hand this? No. Interesting. Those are cool. Or one person blocked it from being 2k. Ugh. Can't wait till you see the moonlight. Yeah, I'm excited. All the weapons in this game honestly look great. I was blown away with just the broadsword on the soldier class in the very beginning. I saw that and I'm like, ooh. They're making a broadsword look pretty. I can't wait to see the stuff that's supposed to look pretty. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Oh, 
Oh no, you didn't. Fuck. I knew I was screwed as soon as I heard him drop down behind me in that tiny ass little hallway. Moonlight glows all the time. Love the weapons with lore, yeah. Well, the moonlight's always been a, uh, a really popular one. Hell, the moonlight even made it into Bloodborne. Like, <laughs> I don't think I don't think From Software is ever gonna make a game without the moonlight. Well, as I say that, I realize they already did because Sekido, I'm sure, didn't have the moonlight. Though personally, I still haven't been able to finish Sekido. It's just something about that game, I, I lose interest very quickly. And I think it's because it's not like most From Software games where you get to choose different types of weapons and stats to make different kinds of builds and characters that play in different ways. Um, Sekido, you're pretty much the same character doing the same thing no matter what. And that kind of just... I don't know, I just get bored after a while. I don't make it very far in that game. I used it a bit, but my Ludwig's was stronger. Yeah, not for me. Love the combat, but I get it. But I get eh. Yeah, I um, I have a hard time. So I kind of ruined myself on my very first playthrough of Bloodborne. I used the, uh, you know, I for me, I get, I get, I get super excited for rapiers for some reason in video games like this. And so when I played Bloodborne, I went full swashbuckler. As soon as I got to Kanehurst Castle. I equipped the Evelyn pistol and the Ryder Palak, the rapier with the pistol built into it. And I went full swashbuckler. And um, I found out later, after beating the game, that I kind of ruined myself because the Ryder Palak is an incredibly good weapon in that game later on when you're fighting all of the enemies that are Ken because they are... They're like the enemies in this game, the, uh, the miners who are... Jesus... Just fucking stop! Those characters, what really pisses me off about those enemies is they're incredibly inconsistent. One time they'll run up and attack me, and they will stagger backwards so hard off of my shield that I can just fully kill them. And then the next time they run up and attack me, and I go to hit them because they get staggered, and they don't get staggered. They just start attacking me nonstop. Like, it's so inconsistent. I don't get it. But, um... The enemies in this game that are weak to that are resistant to all physical damage but weak to piercing and magic, most of the enemies at the end of the game in Bloodborne are like that. And so for me, uh, using the Rider Palash, which is a rapier doing pretty much all thrusting attacks, I just walked through the game like it was nothing. And then I came back and tried going through with Ludwigs, and I was blown away by just how bad the damage resistance was on all the enemies when I was trying to use Ludwigs. It just ruined it for me. Um, I think I would have been, or sorry, I, uh, not Ludwig, because I didn't go through with Ludwig. I went through with, I tried going through with Kirkhammer, and it was it was crazy uh, because I feel like if I had gone through with something like the Kirkhammer first, I wouldn't have had that big of an issue. But because I went through with the Rider Palak and took advantage of that um, damage resistance or weakness, rather, uh, it just it felt, it made it so much harder to go through with any other weapon. So it kind of it kind of it kind of ruined me on uh, on Bloodborne with uh, all those other weapons. Yeah, see there he staggered real hard, and now he's oh now he's not dead. But. There it is again. But then every once in a while he'll just hit my shield and then keep attacking like nothing happened, and that's when I die. One challenger and they called it a rhythm game? What? Get that? I like Maria's weep, but stayed with Ludwig. Loved the heavy hit sound. Ludwig's greatsword was such a cool weapon. The long sword that sheathed into the greatsword? Like, I just loved that idea. And same with the Kirkhammer. Could stagger and kill in PvP easy. Ludwig was great. It was quality, though. Yeah. It depends on how you built it, but yeah. The other thing with Ludwig's was, um, 
it did have a thrust attack, so you could use it fairly well against the Ken. You know, the, the R2 in two-handed mode um, was a thrusting attack. What just happened? Oh my god! Um, I also remember it being one of the better magic weapons. Like if you if you uh, put an arcane, um, oh god, arcane rune on it, you could basically make it pure magic damage with really good magic scaling. So the the way magic worked in Bloodborne was dumb. I didn't like it. Uh, basically, if you put um, a magic rune on the Ludwig's greatsword, it became 100% magic damage instead of physical damage. And it was... I don't know. The magic in Bloodborne was weird. Yeah, I did it all. You could buff it too for over 1k damage easy and do magic on top of physical. Yeah. Ludwig's Ludwig's is um, a really popular sword for good, for good reason. I mean, it's a, a great weapon and really unique and really iconic. Um... When I played Bloodborne, I started with the Sword King, and I loved it. And then I ended up picking up the Rifle Spear, and then the Rider Palash. And that, I mean, oh man. It was so, it's so hard for me to play anything else. I always wanted to do Blades of Mercy, but Rider Palash is better. Um, I always wanted to do Ludwig's or um, Kirkhammer, but Rifle Spear is better. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Everything, everything I tried to think of doing with a strength build, I could find a significantly better dex option and go with that instead. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was just frustrating. Um, I think mainly because I had already played through with the Rider Palash, going back and doing the Kirk Hammer. Um, when I let go with those big charged R2 attacks with the hammer, and they did less damage than a single thrust of my rapier, I was just like, what's the point? What's, why am I doing this? Why? <laughs> play what I like Blades of Mercy was fun dominated in PvP oh the scythe the scythe the burial blade yeah the burial blade was really good honestly I never did PvP very much in any of these games really We will someday get through this area. It's ridiculous we're struggling so much with this area, and it's not like a boss we're stuck on. It's just these stupid basic enemies. These guys. Oh, fuck. Okay, good. Get away. Get away from me. Didn't Bloodborne summon DS3? It's the arthritis. It's catching up with Granny. <laughs> oh man. Black Knight Sword R1 and repeat. I remember doing a lot of PvP in uh, Dark Souls 2 out of all the games. Um, and for me, it was uh, Greatsword. I was using Greatsword Pyro Build and Poison. You done? Uh, I did Great Sword and Pyromancy. Alright, we're just gonna ignore it. Um, and I remember doing a lot in the, uh, the Belfry. And, um... Oh god, whoa! Are you serious? <laughs> uh, I did a lot of PvP in the Belfry. I liked the uh, the cramped space. Meant I could throw down Toxic Mist or Poison Mist and block off half the room and then swing my greatsword. And it's like, alright, are you going to get hit by the greatsword or are you going to roll into the poison for me? <laughs> oh, Dark Sword. Oh god, Dark Sword is so good. Dark Sword is so good. Mortals PS game, hurting me with controls, my wrist. 
It's like Breath of the Wild Genshin. Did a lot of invades to ruin new players' days. Uh, you weren't here last time, but we ran into somebody in Demon Souls that you might have appreciated then. Uh, basically, we forgot to die after defeating a boss. And we went to Stonefang Mine right at the beginning, and we got invaded by a guy who... He, uh, wasn't even trying to kill me. I honestly... He, he had no intention of killing me. He was just throwing out, uh, this Acid Cloud spell that broke all of my equipment. So, eventually... Uh, after running around through this cloud, trying to fight him, didn't have any weapons I could hurt him with because they were all broken. I, I eventually just, because he wasn't trying to kill me, I just quit the freaking game and went back to uh, the main menu and then respawned back at the Nexus. And I needed almost 10,000 souls just to repair my equipment. Uh, I, I had been up to that point using the plate set and not the fluted set that I'm wearing now. And I ended up having to equip the Ring of Strength and switch to the Fluted set because that guy just fucking ruined my playthrough. Like, I needed 10,000 souls. I hadn't even acquired 10,000 souls by that point in the game. I was, I was super pissed off. I was very pissed off. Like, that's when I turned it back to offline mode. I'm like, oh, I'm not dealing with that bullshit anymore. I don't smurf though, I wasn't a punk. That's dirty. They were probably a deity <laughs> YouTuber, a dirty YouTuber? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was dumb. I was pissed off. Like that's what I get for forgetting to put it in offline mode. I love the effects on the enemies when you hit them with magic. The way it just, like, sears all over the body and whatnot. I just hated how these games gave every advantage to invaders. Yeah. Joined other people's games to help them fight invaders. Enemies should attack them too. What well, also frustrates me with these games how um they force you to handicap yourself or deal with invaders. You know, like I can either be human and have full health, but I have to deal with invaders. Or I can be in soul form, not have to... What the hell? Uh, not have to deal with invaders, but I lose, you know, 50% of my max health in order to do it. Like, uh, yeah, I've never been a fan of, of the invasion mechanics in these games. Only last 30 seconds and it takes forever to get another. Wait, what? Oh, pop that seed. Yeah. First playthrough, I go offline. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm offline right now, too. I usually go offline. If I'm streaming, I usually put it in offline because I'm more about progressing through the game. I'm not focusing on PvP, and I'd rather not have to deal with idiot invaders like that guy messing up my stream and my progress by breaking all my shit in a way that I have I don't have the capability of repairing can I I can't reach those guys from here Hey, there we go. Oh, I lost it.
Oh god, he got me. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I finally got him. I killed him. I took him out. And then I died to the last fucking arrow. <laughs>